We're here today on RealAirCulture.com. We're with Jonathan Dreger. He is a market analyst with FarmLink Marketing Solutions based out of Winnipeg. Welcome today, John. Thank you, Sean. Okay, John, we're going to talk about the Canadian Wheat Board's FlexPro pricing program. Uh, deadline's fast approaching, but still, even though this isn't the first year that this program is out, still many farmers really don't understand what this program is, uh, what the advantages or disadvantages are. So let's start out at the very beginning. What is the FlexPro pricing program? Well, I guess the FlexPro pricing program, basically it's very similar to an FPC, except uh, uh, the, the, I guess the difference is, is the sign-up deadline is coming up here on July 30th, and, and, and what the Wheat Board does with the, with the FPC program is starting August 1st, they have an adjustment factor that, that factors into the pricing program, and, and so basically what that, that does is it kind of it kind of links the FPC a little bit more so to the pros. So, for example, if the FPC uh, sharply increases in value, you'll start to have a negative adjustment factor, which kind of helps pull it back uh, incrementally back towards the uh, to <coughs> excuse me to the pool return outlook. Uh, or else, conversely, if the market sells off sharply in the futures and the FPC, uh, it turns out to be quite a bit below the pro, you might have a, uh, a positive adjustment factor. Uh, you know, so, so there's this adjustment factor that starting August 1st, when it's the new pool pricing year, uh, it gets worked into values. What this FlexPro contract does is essentially, if you sign up before the new pool pricing year, so the deadline is July 30th, essentially it allows you to do an FPC price sometime throughout the fall you know this coming crop year but without having to worry about the adjustment factor working in so basically we're committing times to an fpc type of a pricing program it's just that you don't have any adjustment factor worked into the value so what was the experience that producers had last year did they find the on the flex pro they did better than people that pooled their wheat or was it worse well, we uh, we didn't have any of our, our clients, uh, we didn't recommend any FlexPro contract ourselves last year, but just looking over the pricing history uh, uh, from, from last year, aside from a very brief window in November, uh, and then now again right at the tail end of the year when wheat prices rallied quite sharply, really the FlexPro pricing was for most of the vast majority of the year was actually quite a bit below the uh, the pool. So I would suspect that most producers that took a flex pro last year won't have won't have made up particularly great compared to where the uh, where the pool is likely to end up. So what is that telling us? Why it, why is such a difference? To, why was the pool so much higher? Well, it's it's uh, I guess one of the challenges with some of the wheat board pricing programs is it's not the most uh, it's not always exactly transparent in terms of uh, there's obviously the futures pricing component of it. But then there's also, uh, you know, sort of the, the, the basis that they come up with. And, and even though there's not, maybe not a posted basis per se, obviously there's a, some type of a basis calculation that works back into where they get their, their flex pro pricing. And so uh, ultimately at the end of the day, uh, uh, wherever they come up with that calculation, how to compute it and, and, and whatever else they all factor into it, ultimately it, it, for mo- most of the course of the year, it left uh, left producers with a value that was that was lagging the pool. Aside from uh, again a couple of very a couple of very brief windows. So uh, let's jump back to this basis adjustment. Uh, a little bit confusing uh, for me. Uh, why the basis adjustment? Is that if the F, if the Flex Pro is higher than the pool, they can adjust it down closer to the pool, or what? I guess that's kind of the conspiracy theory. I guess they mean, but or the pessimist. Uh, but why the basis adjustment? Mm-hmm. Well, what, when the initially when the wheat board initially had a, a basis pricing program, they they didn't they just had one basis number that they put out, and and so uh, in in the efforts of, of adding at least a little bit of transparency to the process, basically they have now both a basis and adjustment factor. That adjustment factor always existed; it just wasn't broken out separately as a as a separate adjustment factor the way they publish it now. And so uh, again, it's just a way of of kind of of I guess somewhat linking or pulling that FPC a little bit closer to the uh, uh, to the pro and so for example you know when you have a sharp run up in values you'll have a negative adjustment factor that gets put out every single day uh, and, and, and changed every day that kind of kind of pulls those values in a little bit or conversely again if the market is sharply lower you might have a positive adjustment factor which is something that we did see through say last fall for example when the pros were well above maybe where where the FPC was at and so it, it's uh, uh, again, it, it's a way of, of kind of linking that FPC a little bit more so to the to the pro, or it's kind of the most most simple way, I guess, of trying to sort of understand a little bit what it what its purpose is. Right. Well, and understanding it uh, is a bit of the challenge. You know, if we, I, I guess, you know, it, it would appear that this is the board responding to farmers wanting the ability to have a little bit tighter linkage to the spot price uh, in pricing their wheat. 
there is is this accomplishing that or is this more so just uh you know, maybe a farmer just wants to put his grain in the pool because it's maybe a little bit easier to understand. Yeah, it's uh, like the, the Flex Pro in and of itself uh, was designed ultimately, I guess it came out in response to uh, to replace what was the daily price contract, which uh, uh, has been a couple of years now since that was around. But at the time, the daily price contract more sort of gave a, uh, a more direct pricing link to cash elevator prices in the U.S. and and it was a phenomenally successful program from a pricing perspective. You know, producers generally were made up very very well pricing under the daily price contract. The problem with the daily price contract is that it was such a limited number of tons that uh, you know not many producers were able to participate. Basically, it, it filled up almost instantly, and so there weren't a lot of tons, nearly enough tons to go around relative to demand. This Flex Pro pricing program, again, it's kind of more like a, uh, an FPC. Really, the only difference between the Flex Pro and the FPC is that there's no adjustment factor uh, that you would get in an FPC starting August 1 going forward. So I, I guess the program that, that ultimately gives producers the opportunity to price grain at any point during the year, but not have to worry about an adjustment factor. And so, for example, uh, you know, if I know today that I don't want to leave my wheat in the pool, but that I want to price at some point later on in the year, you would take out flex pro tons and not have to worry about facing an adjustment factor if you were concerned that the adjustment factor would be a negative number, which it's likely to be on August 1st, uh, depending a little bit what we, we see in terms of uh, what the wheat board comes out with in terms of, of their uh, pool return outlooks today. But you'll likely see a negative number beginning in August because we have a futures market that spiked higher, and it's unlikely that the pool or the pool return outlooks are going to reflect all of that value on August 1st. So if you're concerned that you're going to have a negative adjustment factor, you know that might be a case where you would you would consider using a a flex pro since that's that's basically the primary difference between it and what the FPC value will be on August first or second. So I guess a couple things. One, you mentioned last year uh, FarmLink didn't advise their clients to go into the flex pro. This year we've seen uh, a recent uh, move upwards in the wheat futures. Uh, is this the year to be in the flex pro con- flex pro contract? Well, I guess uh, you know the. I guess the question is, you know, would you consider Flex Pro as opposed to all the other pricing programs? And then you, you sort of forces one to really drill down in all the details and the nuances and the opportunities and risks of, of doing a basis only, a futures only, an FPC, a Flex Pro, and, and or or of course just leaving the weed in the pool and, and all the options around it, uh, which is which is. Uh, uh, which isn't necessarily always, always an easy answer between analyzing all the different programs and how that relates to an individual's producer's own own circumstances. Uh, you know, where, where a Flex Pro might be useful is, is, is if, uh, if a producer knows that he wants to lock in an FPC value maybe sometime in the coming weeks, the next month, but he doesn't want to do it today, you know, you might take some tons on the Flex Pro knowing that you want to do an FPC in the relatively near future, uh, just because we are likely to see an adjustment, a negative adjustment factor coming August 1st. But, you know, barring that specific circumstance, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure uh, if it, uh, I guess from our perspective, we have done some wheat already in an FPC. And of course, if you do a wheat in an FPC today, for example, there's no adjustment factor anyway. And you know, going forward, we wonder if there might not be better marketing opportunities, considering a basis only or a futures only, or, or those sorts of things. And so, kind of from our perspective, uh, you know, we're, we're still analyzing it. We still have some time, and and maybe as as we see what the wheat board does with its poor return outlook today, uh, wouldn't entirely rule it out. But from our perspective, we think it's unlikely that we ourselves would necessarily recommend any flex pro contracts for our clients this year, uh, for the most part. Uh, just as we as we look and, and see if we're not possibly better off looking at a basis only, you know, futures only, or, or something like that as we go forward. But uh, but we'll see. Perfect, John. Well, John, thanks a lot for joining us today, and we'll talk to you again soon in the future. All right, thank you, Sean.